Okay, everybody here? Yeah. Live stream running as well? Okay, um, then thanks for coming at this uh, late time of day. Um, I'm Michael Mrozek. Um, this can be seen here, also known as Evil Dragon in the community. Oh, there's still coming people here. Let's join in. And I want to tell a bit about uh, the Pandora and the Pyra, which will be the successor of the Pandora that's currently in development. And we'll take a quick look at, look at the history and a sneak peek at the future. First, for those who don't know what is the Pandora, just a quick look. Um, basically, it's a miniature handheld PC, as can be seen here. Um, completely open, runs Linux. Um, it's basically a mixture between a video gaming system, so we've got uh, D-pad and analog controls. But at the same time, it's also uh, a complete um, miniature PC. Right now I have it here and I'm watching the IRC uh, from our community because the people might have some questions as well. And uh, if they are watching the live stream, then I can answer these questions right here. It's always been made to be hacker friendly, so there's no bootloader that you can kill or something like that. It's always recoverable. Um, it's not locked down in any way. You can boot any operating system you want. Um, and of course there's no force uh, for registration or anything like that, so you don't need a Google or anything else account. Um, you can do what you want with it. Basically it's just like a normal PC, just a bit smaller. Um, it was also always very important to have a long battery life. So the Pandora normally has uh, 10 hours of battery life, which is pretty amazing for such a small um, PC. And one of the most important thing is that it's community driven, which means, um, well, it's basically, you all know that the same with Linux all the time. Um, it's a bunch of people working together and as the world is very big, there are a lot of people working together just to make this uh, work. There's no big company or huge com company behind it. And it's also quite expensive. Well, <laughs> quite expensive that can be seen as you like, but um, if, you buy, if I look at the current smartphone with the Cortex-A15, they are at 800 euros, so um, they're expensive. And they're even, even cheaper to build because it's just a flat case and nothing else, and a screen and an SOC. So compared to the big ones, we are pretty cheap actually, um, because we have to pay a lot more to get the parts than they do, um, but we basically have the same price. Yeah, it's, it's expensive compared to some gaming handhelds. Well, to gaming handhelds, yes. Um, but those gaming handhelds usually um, fund themselves with sales of games, which is not the case here, because here we are running open source games um, and emulators and ports. Okay, let's just a quick pictures because if I just hold it in my hand, you can see it very well. As I said, we've got a D-pad, we've got a keyboard, we've got a few knobs. At the back, we've got uh, USB ports, shoulder buttons, uh, TV out port, and uh, mini USB. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much, as I said, a computer combined with a gaming handheld. Now let's just do a quick look at the history of the Pandora. Um, basically, 2007 three guys, I was one of them, um, who were selling the GP2X Linux handheld from Game Park Holdings. Uh, well, we decided to create a new Linux gaming handheld device and uh, after a while we found a case in the uh, PCB designer in the community and that's basically how the Pandora was born. Um, well, yeah, and at first we only thought of it as a gaming device, that it can be a PC basically um, or a complete a mini laptop, that's something we found out later. The idea basically was we wanted to have a device that could at least emulate an Amiga in full speed, which means we needed to have a system that uh, has a touch screen, a keyboard, and a CPU that's fast enough, and that's basically how the first shape of the Pandora came to be. More ideas have been gathered from the community. Um, we actually made a thread about what would your dream handheld be like, and then we picked everything that would be possible um, from the thread and included it into the Pandora. Then the developing starts with uh, some valued community members like DJ Willis, Nodas and Skizix who were active in the scene before, um, worked on the operating system and drivers. And then in 2008, that was just one year later, we had the first prototypes, but only prototype PCBs, the case was not finished yet. And that was really revealed at the, to the public. 
At that time, uh, a Cortex A8 was had impressive um, CPU power, so we suddenly had a large press coverage. And when we started pre-ordering in September 2008, um, the plan was to have it released in December 2008, which didn't work, but it was our plan. Um, over 4,000 orders had been taken within two or three days because of that. And then we just had to cap it because uh, it would have been an issue producing even more. And well, it was our first try producing a handheld. Um, well, uh, 2008 to 2009, a lot of issues occurred, mainly with the cases, and which led to a lot of delays. People were waiting. And in 2010, though that was one and a half years later than planned, the first Pandoras uh, got delivered. Um, but as there still were, yeah, had issues in the production, um, it was a very slow delivery, and some even went up on eBay for, I think, 1,800 euro. Um, simply because it was such a rare device. But the users who got it were still impressed, so they all said it was worth wait. Well, but it wasn't over. We had a lot more delays and issues, which also used up a significant amount of money. And Craig, that was one of the other guys from the uh, first team, decided to sell premium upgrades to deliver Pandora's faster to the customers who already pre-ordered. I wasn't too fond of that, but uh, he was the guy doing uh, basically the organization back then and it seemed the only way to rescue the Pandora. Um, but it didn't really work because early 2011 more issues occurred and about <coughs> 1000 PCBs had been scrapped. So yeah, it was a bit of unexperience, it was a bit of um, bad luck basically and probably also a lot of misorganization and that nearly killed the whole project. Up to then, about 2,700 Pandoras had been delivered and about 1,200, um, in theory, were outstanding. At the time, Craig decided to give up, to give up basically, and close the company. Um, but I didn't want to give up and look for investors, which I found, and decided to move the Pandora production to Germany and have it properly organized, um, so that it would be a smooth run in the future. Early 2012, the time had come and the production resumed in Germany without any major issues, just a small, well, few issues you always have in starting a new board production, but it wasn't a big deal. And from then on, the Pandoras um, were available from stock. That was the first time they were available from stock. Since we still had a lot of pre-orders, the idea was to both deliver them to all the new customers Basically, the new customers um, financed the Pandoras for the old customers. There was no other way to get money back into the pot. And even though the hardware was basically outdated back then, the sales were still pretty good. For various reasons. First, it was the only device, or still is the only device, uh, that can do all that up until now. There's no mini Linux PC with that size. And thanks to Linux and a very optimized operating system, it runs a lot faster than an Android phone. For example, we've got some emulators like Drastic, the Nintendo DS emulator, and actually it runs faster on my Cortex-A8 Pandora than it runs on my Cortex-A9 phone, simply because there's not all that overhead and all the services that are running on Android. Well, in September 2012, the current Pandora, the 1 GHz Pandora, with an improved case had been released. And, well, Craig decided once again to, uh, to offer pre-orders uh, to, for the one gigahertz Pandora's, which led to another fiasco, but I don't want to talk too much about Craig and all those fiascos. Um, we're pretty, I'm pretty happy that basically this is all behind us now, except for remaining pre-orders that are still there, but we're uh, working on getting them the Pandora's as well. In January, I had all my pre-orders delivered, so I don't have any debts to them. And about 150 of Craig's customers should have been still outstanding, but in real, uh, reality it seemed there are, were about 600 left, uh, which is what we're currently trying to finance and pre-order uh, and, and with donations, and I'm selling them for production costs. But well, we're getting there. But now in October 2013, the final Pandora batch of a, about 500 Pandoras have been announced, mainly because uh, the parts are end of life, so it's impossible to uh, get the nubs, it's impossible to get more Wi-Fi modules. Uh, the system is now five years old, so getting parts will be more and more difficult. So it was time to 
go to an end of life and well end of 2013 the first information have been released that I am working on a successor um, without Craig um, that is uh, that will be called the Pyra and well that's what we will be talking about here from now on and uh, one thing I can say right now is that every customer from Craig who hasn't received the Pandora until the Pyra will be released they will be able to get them for production cost price that's all I can offer um, but at least for all the waiting they can get it for a pretty cheap price well before we're talking about its successor we had to think about what's good and bad about the Pandora pretty good are the great gaming controls um, the d-pad is being pretty good I'm a gamer myself and all our customers said well that's one of the best d-pads they ever had the buttons are great the nubs are great when they're working um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're getting there on the what's not so good side <laughs> um, the size is great it's pocketable I can put it into my pocket and that's it it's got a full Linux system which is great uh, well at least for me I don't want any well anybody here wants to run Windows 8 on a handheld no <laughs> okay uh, well it's not locked down uh, you can choose whatever as you like and I still like the freedom to don't have any account anywhere and just have a computer which runs my software that's still something I like but it seems people now these days are happy to have Google accounts and Windows accounts and link them all together so that you can steal everything at once <laughs> well, what's also good is that it has standard ports like a USB port and the SD card slots. So, uh, got a USB stick, got an external hard disk from a friend, just plug it in, copy stuff over, connect the DVD stick and watch TV. Well, it's a mini PC. You can do anything you can on a big. Uh, you can do on a big PC. What's also awesome is the community. We've got a very active and friendly community. They're helpful. They're porting and optimizing software and ports. And we also got the PND system, which is easy to use for new buys, robust and reliable. I know some people don't like it that much, um, but we also decided to keep it together with a standard operating system for the future because it has some advantages, but I want to get to that later. What's also great, of course, is the battery life, so that's also something we would like to keep. What's not so good is the case quality. Um, it looks a bit cheap and it's not too robust. Um, sometimes it develops, develops cracks. Um, we've ha we have it improved with the current version, but uh, the old version developed pretty, yeah, pretty a, a lot of cr uh, cracks, and that in a pretty fast way. So, uh, but we still want to improve it. Then we had a lot of issues with Asian manufacturers. Um, I don't want to say all Asian manufacturers are bad; they certainly aren't. But mostly the Chinese market focuses on large production runs, so 100,000 devices and more they don't care about the uh, small customers and um, well there are good manufacturers and there are bad ones but to find out which one is good and bad uh, would mean you have to visit them all and try to work with them and that's not just possible for such a small um, uh, team so we had some issues there and that's uh, that was some problem with the Pandora as well the analog controls as I mentioned sometimes they are inaccurate when they work they are great uh, but then sometimes when you try to move left say they move left up and stuff like that so they could be improved on Wednesday same Wednesday only Wednesdays only Wednesdays when, when do they not function when do they ah, so <laughs> Well, I, I think it depends on um, yeah, not Wednesdays but uh, it, it heavily depends on the nub so some work always and some don't work at all and there's anything in between so um, if you got a unit which has great working nubs you're happy um, but it's we, we can't test all of them and replace them all of the time because we would have to uh, have a stock of 100,000 nubs or something like that so that's why we need to improve that as well well the screen resolution with 800 times 480 is a bit too small for Linux programs because many of them expect 800 times 600 uh, it's not that a big deal because you can move the windows around, but it's a bit annoying. So that could be improved as well. Yeah. 
That's great. <laughs> <laughs> the internal storage these days is a bit small with 512 megabyte, um, which means we also only have a minimal operating system on there, not a full-fledged one. Uh, if you want to use a full one, you can put it onto the SD card, but it would be nice having a full operating system already on the internal storage and then having the SD cards um, on top of that. Well, the keyboard is hard to use in the dark because you can't see the labels. Um, so even I have uh, the problem typing at the dark sometimes. Um, it feels a bit squishy, because, but that also depends a bit on the person. Some persons love it. Um, some persons uh, think it could be improved, but we're going to take a look at them. Well, not so good. Some parts are not available to buy anymore. And uh, not so good is uh, the sad story that Craig hurt the community and respected members. Um, it went so far um, that he even, um, yeah, that he even uh, said bad words about some of the members, and well, that was not so nice. I don't want to uh, turn this into Craig bashing because he certainly had a lot of his shoulders, um, but it has to be said, and uh, it has to be said that he will not be involved in the next device, at least not in my one. Well, what are the goals? Of course, update the hardware to current gen, because the hardware is now five years old. Improve the, all the current issues, the case and ups, etc. Tight integration with the community, um, which is always something I uh, always try to do, because I always felt like a community member more than I felt of a producer or something like that. I'm always available at the IRC and the, at the web boards, and I love following it. And I'm happy that all those people are working together to create, to create one great device. So. We also try to be as open as possible. It's not possible in uh, every way, but we're trying to be to do that as good as, as we can. And another thing is we want to offer a more standard OS as a main OS. Um, right now we're running Debian on it, uh, the standard ARM Debian. And we want to put additional optimizations um, by the community, for example, hardware acceleration and stuff like that, that will be in a different repository. Um, the reason the more standard OS is better, of course, is you can easily compile, you can easily uh, stay up to date because Debian ARM, for example, has its own repositories. They are always kept up to date and uh, with the current OS we uh, have libraries that are a few years old because it's very, very complicated to uh, keep your own operating system always at the latest state. Yes? We haven't decided yet, but I think so, because uh, the package management from Debian is great. Um, there's an ARM port available, and it's also easy to create basically your own uh, distribution with dbootstrap and then put your own repositories with, op with optimizations on. So uh, we haven't fixed it yet, but it looks like it, yes. I was more about the ARM port. Okay. About the? The ARM flood port. Yeah, RMHF. RMHF, ah, yeah. We want to switch to RMHF, of, of course, yeah. Yeah, right, we are not using RMHF on the Pandora right now, yeah. That's something that's that will also be optimized. Well, of course, we want to keep what's good, the gaming controls, the audio output and the battery life, and we want to improve the hinge as good as possible, but that's something, it's not easy, but we're doing our best. So. You could say keep what's good and improve what can be improved. That's basically the idea for the successor. A pretty easy idea, but um, basically that's what needs to be done. Yep. No, it skipped a few things. Okay. Now let's first start with Dragon Box Pyro, which will be the name. Where does the name come from and what does it mean? Um, first, I didn't want to use Pandora um, because first I wanted to have a new name to forget the bad things that happened and also to, uh, well, I'm not sure if Craig would be angry if we call it Pandora because he was involved in it, so I, I just wanted to have a different new name. The name should be related uh, to the Pandora because during the last years we really had a great community, the Pandora was uh, doing well. So it should be related. It should be easy to remember in short and not something like, well, just enter Pandora into Google and now you've got Pandora accessories, you've got <coughs> Pandora radio, you've got the Pandora battery, you've got anything Pandora. So I wanted to have a name where, uh, which is not yet used that much. So we had suggestions and votings from the uh, community. 
And well, Pyra was basically what has won, or well, in English you would probably call it Pyra, in German it would be Pyra, don't know in your language. We'll see what the people will call it. And going back to Greek mythology, Pyra, that's a bit different uh, written, but I didn't want to have the name like that because nobody would be able to write that. <laughs> um, that's the daughter of the Pandora, which fits as well. So that was the reason for the name. And what will it be like? Well, as said, state-of-the-art CPU, LCD and speakers, new accurate NUPs that don't wear out. Um, that's simply because the new NUPs are magnets with hall sensors. Um, we've got them on the dev board. We will be uh, back at the, at the table tomorrow, so anybody who wants to try out the dev board can do so tomorrow the whole day. Um, we want to have a backlit keyboard, which is also uh, something that I have been missing on the current unit. A robust and better looking cave, improved connectivity, so Wi-Fi will be improved and be state of the art. Um, we are planning to have 3G and UMTS, but only as optional modules, so if you don't want it, simply don't buy it. USB ports and a standard HDMI port, um, which would also make it possible to design a, a breakout a, a, a cradle at home, so you can just put it into your docking station. The docking station is a normal HDMI monitor and the keyboard and mouse attached, and then you have a PC at home which is also great. Of course, RAM needs to be upgraded, 512 megabyte is nothing these days, and the internal storage as well. Um, and we still want to use an analog audio wheel, because I still hate those buttons, which and you never know when you switch your device on, is it on, is it off. Uh, sometimes the buttons, you take one, two, three seconds to react. So an analog audio wheel is what the community wanted and what I still want to keep because it's simple, turn it left, turn it right, and it works right away without using any CPU power. Um, I have a question. Uh, sure. So is, uh, 3G, can you also use it as a phone then? You can, you can in theory use it as a phone, yes. Um, the question is, will it be usable? We have a microphone in there and speakers, uh, so you could talk like that, <laughs> a bit like the Engage side talking. Um, but you could, of course, use a headset or a Bluetooth headset, okay. but it would be possible, yes. No, 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 please. <laughs> it's useful. It's useful, sure. But I, I'd rather use it for a mobile internet. So let's take a look at the main SOC, the processor. Um, actually, it took us about one year to find a proper uh, SOC for that. We had a lot of talks with different manufacturers, but it was always something that we didn't like. Um, NVIDIA, for example, um, when, when working with NVIDIA, they told us we have to use their own uh, partner companies to do the design and production, and I don't think with such a niche product and such a low quantity we would have found any company. Um, Samsung didn't want to sell us their SOC because, uh, well, we were below 100,000 or something like that. Um, all the Chinese SOCs has, have the issues that um, they either have no Linux drivers or they don't have a hardware documentation or both, uh, which makes it really hard to design a PCB around it. Um, so in the end, uh, we went back to the Texas Instruments OMAP. We had a Texas Instruments before in the Pandora. Uh, and I know a lot of people were crying, well, Texas Instruments, they went out of business of that. Um, that's not true. They just went out of the smartphone business. Um, but they're still in automotive and medical business, which was all their, um, their main uh, goal before that as well. So um, the big, um, the huge advantage be is that we can get it in low quantities because everything that's made for industrial usage can also be gotten in low quantities. Of course, if you have a medical design or if you need for your company a few things, you don't need to buy 100,000 SOCs. So we can buy them, we've got a good documentation, and they have also Linux drivers available for us. So we've got a state-of-the-art Cortex-A15, which is what uh, current high-end smartphones have, with up to 1.7 gigahertz each. Um, that's pretty fast, we were running, um, outside on the table, we were running a KDE4 with Battle for Vesnoth, and I think GIMP, and at the same time two PlayStation emulators uh, on one screen, and it worked without any issues in full speed. So. Uh, he, he already started again, okay. <laughs> so if you take a look there, that's just the board. Uh, of course, you can play around with it tomorrow outside the table as well. Uh, but it's pretty impressive how fast it is. One of the bad things is the Power VR, um, which is the 3D processor, and it doesn't have any open source drivers available. 
but well, except for the uh, Mali, I think there's no open source um, driver for any of those SOC 3D uh, chips available. And the Mali was only in the Samsung chip, I guess, which they didn't want to sell us to us or in slower SOCs. So that uh, didn't have to help. Well, it still has DSP and Neon, and we want probably we want to go to two gigabyte of RAM. Um, more gigabyte would probably just make it more expensive, and on the other side would need more um, power. And uh, right now, I think when we had a lot of things running at the same time, we were using about 600 megabytes. So I'm not sure if you need more than two gigabyte on a mobile device. Only if you want to compile with more. <laughs> it should work in with two gigabytes. In in <laughs> okay, well, uh, you've got swap. You've got two SDXC card slots that goes up to a few terabytes, so that should be enough for swap. <laughs> for power saving, basically. Yeah. Big little architecture. Yeah, similar to the big little, yeah. So you use uh, M4 cores for low? You can do that, yes. Right now, the uh, Cortex A15 cores simply uh, go down so that you don't need that much power. But I'm not sure what we exactly can do with the Cortex M4. We just started with the hardware development. Um, what you see here is without any hardware acceleration yet. It's just a standard Debian, um, and there's no hardware acceleration chip used yet. It's just on, uh, running on CPU with uh, software motors. Yeah, but fast enough for, the, for that. Then let's go to the LCD. Um, the one we will probably use uh, is a full HD 1920 times 1080. Um, that's a bit of an overkill in resolution, I uh, think, but it was impossible to get a lower one. Uh, either you get 800 <laughs> times 480, which is a bit too low, or you get higher ones because the smartphone business moves on to 4K and Ultra HD on those small <laughs> screens, whatever. Yes, a question? Um, no, that's probably just because I was uh, typing it to this morning. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, it, it can't be interlaced in a in a display. No, it's P. Yeah, 1080p. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, it's got a fast response time of 20 milliseconds, which is great for an LCD. Um, if you've got a Google Nexus 5, uh, it's the same screen, so you can uh, already take a look how well it is. Um, one thing I thought about is that a high resolution could also be used to accurately simulate a CRT monitor. Uh, when playing old Super Nintendo or DOS games, um, you need a lot of lines in between to make blooming effects or something like that. <laughs> I think that would be possible with that resolution. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> needs to code that, but it would surely look awesome. Um, should be possible with hardware filter? Yeah. Otherwise, of course, um, it's great for viewing videos or pictures, um, but well, you can also use a, t a half 720p resolution and just upscale it. I don't think you will see too many pixels. But it's, it's interesting. It's not possible to get any 720p displays anymore because the industrial uh, doesn't need that high resolutions and the smartphones need a lot more these days. Things are going crazy. <laughs> well, let's go to the gaming controls, LEDs, and keyboard. Um, as you can see there uh, on the dev board, we've got a few LEDs um, already lighting up. That's the backlit. Of course, there um, you can control them uh, in brightness, switch them on and off with software. That's all in the user space. We will also have some RGB LEDs, which can be used for well SD cards, or you could use one RGB LED for the battery status, red when it's, when it's uh, empty, green when it's uh, full, and something in between if you want to, um, if you want to see how uh, much juice there's in the battery left. Of course, you can also use it for email notification. Whatever you want to do, um, it's in user space, you can code it in. We will also we have a D-pad, then four shoulder buttons. That was a huge request from many Pandora members. And uh, we will most probably also have six face buttons, though we have to check if that can be done in a good way to fit in the, in the space right now. The case company is currently checking that. Um, but it looks like we will have six face buttons, which is uh, okay for some fighting games and stuff like that. Oh, that's even more complex and complicated. Why do you need them, except for Xbox emulation, which won't be possible? <laughs> yeah, that's 
Why you've got analog controls like the knobs for racing games? Okay. Well, we have to make a limit somehow. <laughs> and um, we don't, uh, one thing I always want to do, I don't want to go into anything overly complex um, because the more you try to improve it, the more can also go wrong. So we try to improve the important things and keep it simple. Um, when everything works, we can work on the next device and improve even more things. But as a small company where there's no huge uh, financing backing uh, in my back, uh, we have to see where we can. Yeah, okay, I'll make a Kickstarter just for those shoulder buttons. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the case will be available um, for uh, as case design file, so you can design it and print it yourself, if you like. It's a hacker-friendly device. Okay, the uh, power button as said with the RGB LED, backlit keyboard and two more RGB LEDs right now. This is a quick mock-up I made with the old Pandora. Um, ignore the keyboard layout, it's not yet fixed or anything, but you can see we've had the uh, key row will go down so that you can have the numbers um, like that. You will have the speakers up there, so we have more screen for the um, more room for the screen, and we have a power button, not a switch anymore, because well, I don't know why we the switch is just not needed at all at the Pandora. It can all be done with a, a power button, and that's what we want to use. Also, we want to have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi stuff like that buttons. As said, it's the keyboard layout is not fixed. We want to work on that with the community together. Um, but well, the microphone is simply uh, will simply be a digital microphone, and uh, same as on the Pandora, each hardware will be designed so that it can be completely switched off. You don't need a hardware switch for that, but if you can switch it off in software with root, well, of course, it could. In theory, somebody could hack into your Debian and try try to switch it on, but I'm not sure if that device will be. Uh, the top priority for hackers. <laughs> well, maybe, but I'm not sure about that. We have a microphone in the Pandora as well, and nobody, I think, nobody tried to hack into it. <laughs> you at least don't know about those. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, that would be possible. Something to think about, but yeah, sure. Stuff like that is what always improves all those uh, ideas. Okay, let's go to connectivity. Uh, Wi-Fi will be improved. We haven't yet decided on the chip, but it will probably be 802.11abgn. Maybe only BGN because A is not really used widely anymore, but um, you will have 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz available. It will have Bluetooth, uh, not yet 100% sure if 3.0, 4.0. As mentioned, optional UMTS 3G and GPS because that's built into the uh, UMTS module as well. So you could use it for navigation, for quick web, web serving outside, you could use it as a phone, as mentioned. HDMI out, so you can connect it to standard flat screens, which is great like that. Go at home, connect it to your monitor, use it as a PC. It will have a full USB host port with a hub included, which is, uh, I'm mentioning that because the Pandora doesn't have a, have a hub in, so you can only use pure USB 2.0 device. If you try to connect the USB 1.1 device, it will simply crash, you need a hub in there. Uh, that has to be changed, and that will be changed. We will have a micro USB port on the go as well, two SDXC card slots, and a headset port. So. Nothing much has changed from the Pandora, it just has have been improved, the components will be more recent. The battery, um, which was also a lot of discussion about, um, the battery will be the same as the Pandora for various reasons. First, um, batteries are, can only be really bought in uh, China and our current develop, uh, distributor and manufacturer is reliable, so we bought them from them uh, within the last years and he was always fast, reliable. We had no issues with them and we don't want to try anything and choose another one <laughs> and then uh, have another Chinese company with issues. So the batteries will be the same. Um, we also talked to him and he said the only way to improve the capacity right now with the current technology 
uh, would be to improve the battery size, but then again we had to improve the case or the uh, size of the Pyra, and we didn't want that. Yes? Uh, which one? <coughs> no? Light body. Like yeah. What you said it has, uh, it has a missile batteries. Okay. Did I? No. Okay. I haven't said anything about the type Just of battery. Same type. Same type, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, not just the same type, but the same battery. And uh, well, the case will be improved because uh, the current case we had to put some bumpers in there so that the battery will fit properly. That will be improved so that it will fit uh, right from the beginning. And one advantage is still if there are people who have a Pandora and don't want to upgrade to a Pyro or anything like that, um, they don't have to fear that they won't get batteries in the future because it will be the same battery. So uh, we will have them on stock. Well, and if you got a Pandora and a Pyro, you can use uh, both batteries for both systems, which is always great as well. Well, the battery life, um, that's pretty hard to say right now because uh, we have uh, our dev board is currently connected to the official TI OMAP EVM. Um, but it should be approximately the same. The components, um, uh, the standard components like Wi Fi and the LCD use the same power, and the performance per watt is a bit lower, it's better on the current systems, on SOCs. So, when doing the same task, it should use a bit less battery than the Pandora. And of course, when doing high rendering stuff, uh, running two PlayStation emulators or something like that, um, then you need a lot more battery than on the Pandora, that's for sure. But for mostly daily work and web browsing and stuff like that, it should be about the same as the Pandora, which is about 10 hours right now. Standby time a lot more, listening to MP3s also a lot more, but normal work time is about 10 hours. Let's come to the case, one of the uh, huge issues we still had with the Pandora, because it doesn't look like a 500 euro device. It looks like a 50 euro device, and that was a bit of a problem sometimes. Um, the case will be completely redesigned and produced by a company in Europe, uh, Form Action in Greece. And there's one advantage that the same company, that one company is both doing the design and the production. Um, first, the designer knows the specification and tolerances of the machine, so he knows exactly what he can design and what will work. That was a huge issue when we did the case for the Pandora, because the designer was sitting in uh, USA and uh, the case company was in China, um, and then he sent his, them some designs, then they had cracks in there, uh, they had shrinking marks and anything. Well, and then the issue was, the designer was, it was the fault of the, of the manufacturer, and the manufacturer said it was the, cause, uh, the fault of the designer. Well, two people, or one company and one person, and each blaming, one blaming each other. I have no idea who's wrong, who's right, uh, but if I have it in, in the same company, they can't use, uh, they can't say that, because they have to take care that the design is properly. We also have a faster turnaround times because uh, I can call them up, I say we need these and these changes, the designer can do the change, um, then he goes 20 meters uh, further and just produces a new prototype case and then we have it within a for, uh, short time frame. Um, with the Pandora I think we had about four to five weeks for just small changes, um, which led to a lot of delays, um, so it's good that we don't have this issue anymore. Communication is also easier, I don't have to speak Chinese. Um, and our contact partner there uh, speaks German fluently and English as well, so uh, there's no language barrier. And the distance is also no issue. Um, I was there in Greece last weekend and we had, uh, with the hardware designer of the PCB, and then we discussed the different details, etc. And going to China um, with all those customs and stuff like that is also an issue. So in the end, we will have a high quality uh, of the case. Um, question about the case. Yes. How far are you there already with the port size and stuff like this? Like you mentioned HDMI port. Mm -hmm. Which kind of HDMI port do you mean? Full size? No, uh, micro, micro. Micro. You can like you can put a full size on on the back. Yeah. You don't have that much space. Well, basically, what they did is they made uh, they first made a copy uh, basically of the Pandora design just with already improvements that it uh, looks better and that it doesn't have any shrinking marks. And from there on, they are improving the case with every board revision they get. So we always send them the latest revision and they uh, change it. 
Um, are they also working on improving the ergonomics a little? Yes. Because right now, when holding the Pandora for some hours, yes. you will have marks in your yeah, hands. Yeah, exactly. Well, if you, if you hold it and use the shoulder buttons, if you don't use the shoulder buttons, it work. But if you use the shoulder buttons, then you have marks on your hands, yeah. But that is something I've, I've spoken with them as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, we are closely working together. I'm having contact with them once or twice a week already, and which is way better than with the Chinese company. We had contact, well, we had a question, got an answer four weeks later, I think. Um, so that's already a huge improvement and well, I can't tell when the case will be finished because it all depends. We're still looking into the hinge because that will be the most complex uh, part to design. Um, we're also looking into the uh, key mat design um, because such a key mat is not easy to produce. So we're looking for companies there. And of course, as long as the uh, PCB isn't finished, they can finish the case design. But that's happening at the same time. So the designer of the PCB and of the case uh, both working together closely so that we don't have to wait until the um, PCBs finish before they start designing the case. Um, how problematic is the specification of the CPU? As far as I know, those A15 ones mm -hmm. can produce a lot of heat. Yep. And seeing that in the current design of the mm -hmm. current Pandora, the position of the chip is pretty close to the battery. Mm -hmm. the batteries really love heat. Um, <laughs> Do you already have a plan how to handle yep. the amount of heat? Yes, we have, we have different plans there. Um, first, as you can see the, on the EVM, the processor has a heat sink on it, mm -hmm. which we will also do. We have a company uh, who is specifically doing a wide area heat sink so that okay. the heat will be, um, moved, uh, will be shared around the area. And I think the battery is suited to go up to 50 degrees or something, so it's 40 or 50 degrees. And I made already some measurements on the full load. We won't get more out of the CPU as 70 degrees, but that's without heatsink. Mm -hmm. So right now 70 degrees seems to be the maximum, maybe a bit more when the GPU is still active. So with a heatsink that basically goes over the whole backside, um, there will be a lot less and then there's plastic in between as well, um, which can also have some uh, metal inlay if we want. So we're trying to do that. Um, with that, that Please. With 70 degrees or without heat sink or with that heat sink or um, with, without. It has an internal temperature measurement. If, uh, with the heat sink, it goes up to, I think, about 55 degrees because with that one. one gets much more heat Could be, yeah. Okay. No, so 74 was the maximum we had right now. Well, what you can also do is. Um, you could cap it um, because the CPU has a temperature sensor in there, there. so uh, you could simply lower the CPU power when it goes too high. But that's not our favorite uh, way we want to do. But if in case it really gets too high, we could do that as a worst case scenario because usually it doesn't get that hot. Maybe when compiling Resnot, yeah, for hours. <laughs> <laughs> it takes hours. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Well, production will happen at a reliable company, of course. Um, production and assembly will happen at Global Components in Germany, uh, which is the same company that has been producing the Pandora for years now without any issues. They're fast, flexible, and reliable. And another uh, advantage is that they're just a couple of minutes away from the PCB designer. Who that will be? Well, the team will follow soon. Something about the operating system, I mentioned it already, it will probably be based on uh, Debian ARM. Right now we are having the unstable um, distribution running without any major issues. Um, the repository will, there will be a repository for optimized Pyra packages, for example SDL with hardware uh, acceleration and stuff like that. Uh, maybe we will also recompile some of the most important packages um, because Debian has the problem that they are compiling with Thumb which makes smaller binaries, uh, but a slower system. And we probably want that the base system is fast. And well, LibreOffice or stuff like that, I'm not sure if Thumb makes a huge difference, but uh, at least for the basic sy uh, base system, um, we want to see that it will be as fast as possible. Uh, well, for the US, what's the plan with the kernel um, changes? Mm -hmm. In the old Pandora, there was quite a problem that the changes were kept in an old repository, and it was difficult to get to a more recent kernel release. 
well, not the just because of the problem we are, but. Uh, yeah, well, the problem with the kernel is that um, a lot of things, of uh, OMIP related things, have been thrown out of the mainline and they don't accept it. Okay. So if you want an OMIP kernel, you can go mainline, basically. I'm, I'm not sure how exactly that is right now. I just know from, from, from the old OMIP 3, I think Notas mentioned that there have been quite a bit of things removed. So we don't know uh, how that will work out. Uh, Notas always tries to get the things into the mainline kernel. Um, but there will always probably be some optimizations that can't go mainline. But we will have, of course, our kernel git as well. But we're trying to, uh, well, right now it's not running a really optimized kernel. It's just a standard kernel that has a few configuration options enabled in there. And we're trying to stay as standard as possible. But uh, we will have our own git probably again. And can you please make sure that the two nubs are seen as one gamepad device? Not a separate joystick. Well, that's something we can tell Notas, yes. Please do so. <laughs> well, should be possible now because we don't even have, uh, uh, well, the NUPs have changed. They, have, they don't have their own Atmel drivers. Um, they're just basically I2C devices. So um, you can do anything with them if you like. Good. <laughs> Good. The PND system is met, or uh, as I mentioned before, or something similar will be kept as well. Um, simply because of the reason it's easy for handling large games and packages on your, on your SD cards. For example, stuff like Cheddar Knights or emulators with ROMs or something like that. I'm happy to have that on my SD card. I can remove the SD card, put it into another system and use it there. Um, and you don't have any data loss of games, game data, save data or anything else when you have a system crash. If the internal memory crashes for some reason, shouldn't happen, but always can happen, and you can boot the system. It's easy to refresh the operating system, but it's probably a bit more complicated to rescue any data saves you have. And when you got that on your SD card, which you can easily back up with your PC, that's a lot easier. It's also pretty easy for the developers to upload it into the repository. We've got our own repository, um, which uh, can automatically update the packages and stuff like that. And um, you don't have to open up your own De Debian repository. There's just one website and you just create your account, upload it, and then you've got the PND ready for anyone. Um, the cards can, as mentioned, simply be put into a different system. So if I just remove my card from my Pandora and put it into this Pandora, then I have all my games, saves, uh, and programs as well. So if you ever have to send in the system for a repair, just remove your um, SD card, put it into the new system, you've got all your stuff. Of course, things like Firefox, uh, web browsers, email clients, and LibreOffice can be installed using the standard Debian repository. Um, but everyone knows Debian is not the uh, is not a famous gaming system. So while there are quite a few games in Debian, um, we have a lot more games for the Pandora available that are in the repository. And so we want to keep that the same. You have the Debian repository for all your standard programs you want to use, like GIMP. It will be kept updated. And you've got the PND system for um, the games that can be handled as on the Pandora. Well, what you, can you expect power-wise? We, uh, we have tests running on the current dev board. It runs full KDE 4 without any issues. It doesn't mean you have to run KDE 4. You can, of course, run Openbox, LXD, whatever you like, what's in the Debian repositories. Um, right now, I simply have LXDE, uh, XFCE4, and K KDE4 running, so uh, you can simply select what you want. GIMP runs full, fluently and smooth, so even filters are just a couple of seconds with large pictures. It does multitasking without issues and is staying responsive. We've got two PlayStation emulators running at the same time in an operating system, I think. That shows what we can expect in the future, because that's all done without any hardware acceleration right now. Well, based on the experience with the Pandora, the Pandora does full speed emulation up to PSX with Amiga and DOSBox and is, uh, up to a slow, a slow Pentium, basically. The Pandora runs a few PSP emulated titles in full speed, many DS games already, some in 64 uh, titles, and, well, most Dreamcast titles near full speed, so I think three fourths, something like that, 75%. So the Pyro should easily be able to emulate all these in full speed. And of course, you have a snappier desktop experience. Yes, a question. Uh, you're saying uh, Pandora runs a couple of Nintendo DS games, but how does it do that when it is on one screen? Well, the resolution is high enough to have both screens on the same. 
or you've got a TV out cable uh, where you can use your TV as second screen and uh, the uh, Pandora as first screen, which is pretty amazing because I was playing Okami then uh, with my girlfriend, for example. She was watching, uh, watching the screen and I just had the map on my Pandora screen. That works pretty well. So it is possible. <coughs> let's go to the team. Well, that's me, um, one of the founding members of the Open Pandora. Originally my job was um, taking care of the, of the Pandora community, but since 2012, as mentioned, I had to, I took over and managed everything that had to be do with the Pandora, and since then we had a smooth run. So I'm pretty much experienced now with manufacturing and production. Then the hardware designer will be uh, Nikolaus Schaller, not Michael Weston anymore, uh, simply because the reason Michael has a full-time job now and also has a family to take care of. So I asked him, but he already mentioned he doesn't have too much time, so um, we had to stick with another one. But you might know Nicolas Schaller because he was the one who designed the GTA 04, or currently the Neo 900, so he's experienced with OMIP designs as well. He's doing this uh, for years, has worked for Siemens and is now running his own company. Uh, and he's experienced with hardware designs and Linux. And well, one of the good things is he's, he's living in the same, com in the same place where uh, the manufacturing company is. So whenever there's a prototype run, he just goes over and can debug right away and check if there's a hardware fault or a software fault or whatever. He's also the one who helped me a bit uh, with moving the Pandora production over to Germany. He suggested to use global components. He helped me a bit with the prototype run to find some errors, so he's the one doing the hardware right now. And of course, Grashvi does Ignotas, I hope I spoke that name correctly. Um, also known as Notas. Uh, if anybody owns a Pandora, I don't think I need to tell anything about Notas. Um, he was already helping to debug the Pandora hardware from the very beginning with dev boards. He improved and optimized all the drivers, uh, the kernel and, the so and a lot of software for the Pandora, for example the PlayStation emulator or Pico Drive. And he's a long time respected member of the community. I'm pretty happy to have him uh, back in the team, um, or still in the team, because he's really de doing a great job with all those optimizations. Then we still have Fatih Kilic. Um, some might remember him uh, from the Pandora. He is also one of the founding members, even though he has not been active in the community during the last years. Um, but he was still helping me uh, sourcing all the various parts. He's experienced with Asian companies and sourcing parts from and manufacturers. Um, as mentioned, we try to do as much as possible in Europe, but some things like batteries or carry cases, AC adapters, uh, just are best uh, to be bought in China. Simply, if you go to a European company and want to order AC adapters, all that we do is uh, simply order them from China as well. Then there are other community members like Skizik, Zep3, DJ Willis, PD, Zep, Lunixbox and uh, various others who helped with the Pandora before and they also said they want to help with the uh, uh, Pyra as well when they have the time. How does it look with financing the device? Well, to fund the device, develop and manufacture device up to the final prototype already exists. So, mm, that sentence doesn't make any sense, I think, but uh, what I wanted to say is that, I, that we've got enough money already up to the stage to the final prototype. So, the full design process is already funded. We won't need any money before um, the device is really working and has a proper case. Then only the mass production run needs to be financed. There are various options to do that like pre-orders, Kickstarter, bank loan, investments, etc. We will take a look at that as soon as we've got the time. Okay, <laughs> I'm trying to hurry. <laughs> and of course donations are always welcome. You can check the homepage for more information or buying Pandora's and other stuff from my shop. That's www.dragonbox.de also helps here. Everything goes back into the Pandora, uh, into the Pyra. When will it be available? Well, we made that mistake with the Pandora and said it will be available end of December. This time I won't say anything, no specific date. But you can follow the development blog. The homepage has now been opened. And I will post regularly on the blog what's happening and you can make, uh, you can think about yourself, well, it couldn't be that long now, but I won't give you any dates. <laughs> So if you want a portable Linux device right now, maybe get a Pandora and wait uh, for the Pyra. If you've got a lot of time, you can wait for the Pyra, but, well, we've got limited stocks. 
I think that's the, yeah, that's just the last page. Other more less important tidbits, the schematics and case design files this time will be made public. So uh, if you want to hack around in the hardware, you've got the design files for that. If you want to design your own case or change anything in the case, um, you can simply uh, print it out and change it. A huge community already exists from the Pandora, so we've got a lot of developers right from the start. We we'll try to get it as back, much backwards compatible as possible and try to be to produce as little as possible in Asia, simply because we don't have the manpower to control them all. Well, what can you do? Support us, spread the word, join the community, buy Pandora's. Thanks a lot for your support. Um, two short questions. Yes. One. Do you already know how much memory you want to include as NAND? No. Two, <laughs> what do you plan for charging? Do you plan to go the micro USB? Yeah, micro or? USB. Yeah. That's so the, the normal standard software. these days. Yeah, exactly. Well, if you want to visit the developer's blog, that's open on pyrohandheld.com. The website has been opened. Um, well, the time flew. We didn't have that much time for questions. But if you want, you can go come to the uh, table tomorrow. You can go to the boards and ask questions, and they will be replied to. Okay, thanks a lot.